Uh, I couldn't be more proud today of this event. It's been a long time coming. I think it's been almost four years, uh, this process of trying to get this declaration signed, so I'm very, very proud. And I want to thank again the OSCE for all their help in making this day happen. The United Nations, again, for your excellent speech underscoring the primacy of human rights in this process and the primacy of the state in taking responsibility for this issue. In the interest of time, I'm going to forego most of my remarks and just simply, I just simply want to say on behalf of the families of the missing, who I love tremendously, we've worked together since 1998, I'm so happy for this moment, but in, on their behalf, I'd like to remind your excellencies two things. The process is not over yet. <laughs> there are still 12,000 persons missing. While you have made great strides and great accomplishments in this process by accounting for over 70 percent, which is unprecedented, there are still tens of thousands of families of the missing in this region who are suffering as a consequence of the uncertainty of not knowing the fate of a loved one. Um, and it is your obligation to maintain this process to keep it going, and you know that. So on their behalf, I want to remind you of their obligations, of your obligations to keep this process going. It's not over yet. The second statement I want to make and the, the other issue I want to underscore is this is also a beginning. This declaration uh, marks a historic event today where states from now on will take responsibility for the issue of missing persons. As Ambassador uh, Miller, our chairman, has underscored previously, this issue is as old as mankind. There are persons missing around the world. We don't even know how many people are missing as a consequence of armed conflict, human rights abuses around the world. These numbers are unknown, whether it's Latin America, whether it's Asia, whether it's Africa. The issue is enormous, and yet, for unknown reasons, this issue has remained a silent one. And in many ways, because the issue has affected largely men who have gone missing from armed conflict and human rights abuses, leaving mainly women behind to struggle and fight for their rights. So this is a beginning. This is a beginning where I hope that states from now on will take the responsibility that you have shown uh, through great efforts and I know how difficult it has been because we've been behind you every step of the way working with you pushing you trying to make sure that you take account for this issue with you at almost every single of the 3,000 mass grave sites that have been excavated with you and trying to use new technologies to identify the missing and with you most importantly to ensure that this process was transparent and one that was accountable to its citizens and one that safeguarded the rights of the families. So I hope that this day will mark a beginning where states begin to take responsibility for atrocities that have been committed, not only with cases of persons missing from armed conflict and human rights, but also cases of persons missing from human trafficking, from organized crime, and to help families of the missing who are suffering around the world. I thank you again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and members of the media and the press, and most, most sincerely, your excellencies, for signing this declaration today. And on the behalf of the families, we hope that this will mean progress for your cases in the future. So thank you again. What I'd like to do now is uh, we'll have a photo call um, where we're going to invite people to have pictures with you. Uh, so first, um, I just I'd like to jump in, if I may, to have a photograph taken with you, if you don't mind. So thank you very much, Excellencies.